Then one Führer Lang, or if you wish, Major Lang. My regiment is Liebstandard SS Adolf Hitler. We're the only regiment to wear his signature on our sleeve. We are his, you see. We belong to the Führer. Führer means guide. I don't suppose you even know what SS means, do you? Schildstaffel, protection squad, or if you wish, bodyguard. Now you have it. We are the Führer's bodyguard. I have been asked why I joined the SS. Well, it's very simple. As a veteran of the Great War and a holder of the Iron Cross, I was simply asked to join. But I did serve with the Fry Corps before. I even fought the Communists in 1919. But after the war, many veterans joined the SA, SA, the Sturmabteilung. These are the Bully boys, the so-called brown shirts. Only the elite could join the SS. And that's when I joined the National Socialist Party. But you must understand. You must understand what it was like after the Great War. What it was like for those of us who were able to return. We believed as German soldiers we were not defeated. Can you imagine what it was like for us? to one minute be fighting for our lives against the Tommies and the Frenches, and then the next told to stop, go home, Alice kaput. It was awful. Millions of lives lost or broken for nothing. Some of our men were so angry that they continued to fire after the so-called armistice. They paid for that with their lives. My regiment we simply got out of the trenches and walked back to the railway station. We caught the train back to Berlin, back home. We got off the train and formed up in our ranks, our lines, ready to march back across town. You can imagine the surprise when we were joined by a regimental band. And as we marched out of the Bahnhof, the railway station, thousands of people lined the streets. Flags waving. Young women threw flowers at our feet. We were not treated as a defeated, broken army. We were treated as a victorious army. We even marched underneath the Brandenburg Gate. We felt so proud. But when we reached our barracks, our Kassanen, our colonel addressed us. He looked right into our hearts. He said, thank you. We have a saying in the German army, Ich habe ein gefallen Kommanden, means I have a fallen friend. Do not forget him. He reminded us of this. Then he simply says, go home. I asked, what of our weapons, our uniforms? He says, take them with you. This business is not over yet. I've never forgotten those words. But I was so eager to get home. I'd not seen my family for over a year. My wife, Angela, my sons, Kurt and Rolf. My heart was beating as I approached our street and there they were, waiting for me. But what a shock I had. So pale, so thin, shivering in the cold. It had begun to snow, their clothes worn out. I embraced them and we walked back to our house. There was no food there. So I opened up my army pack, took out what rations I had. It was only biscuits, stale bread and some sausage, but to my family it was a feast. I hadn't realized that we'd been fed better at the front than our families at home. Things just went from bad to worse. All through 1918 to 1923, things just got worse. No food in the shops. 
my wife and sons. They didn't make it, I'm afraid. They died of tuberculosis. I had nothing left. I tried to survive. I rebuilt my business as an engineer. I had some success, but come 1923, when our economy simply disintegrated, you had to be there to witness it, to see the people queuing for hours upon hours just for a loaf of bread. Do you know, just after the war in 1918, a single loaf of bread cost 63 pfennigs. That's about 15 of your pence. But come January 1923, I've got it written down here. January 1923, a loaf of bread cost 253 Deutschmarks. That's over 60 of your pounds. But come November 1923, less than a year later, it cost 201 billion marks. That's over 50 billion of your pounds. And all of this, because of the Treaty of Versailles, the Diktat Agreement. Entschuldigen Sie bitte. Ja? Stimmbaumführer lang. Was? Was asken Sie hier? Also. Ja? Natürlich. So, später, ne? Ja, ja, ja. Wiederhin. What the Treaty of Versailles meant to my country was that we had to pay back 6,600 million of your pounds. We were still trying to recover from the Great War ourselves. We couldn't hope to pay. As a result, the French and Belgian armies invaded. They occupied the Ruhr. They took, stole our raw materials. Workers tried to resist. Over 100,000 of those workers were expelled from their fatherland, from their homeland. A hundred of them were killed by the French. If we couldn't manufacture goods, we couldn't export, we couldn't make money. So what did our government do? Useless. Printed more and more paper banknotes. It became so bad. The pensioners found what they lived on for a month wouldn't buy a cup of coffee, let alone a loaf of bread. Something had to be done or we would simply starve. And there he was, someone who could see what we needed, Adolf Hitler. He called for a revolution. In November 1923, the Munich Putsch, it was the beginning for us. He said he would take over the government, guide us out of this mess. That's why I joined the SS. That's why I become a member of the Nationalist Socialist Party, a Nazi to be part of the new Germany, to be part of the Thousand Year Reich. Of course, after the Great War, we, the Nazis, weren't the only political party trying to seize power. They were the communists. They tried to lead a Soviet-style, a Russian-style revolt, a revolution. But they were led by the Jews, the same Jews, greedy parasites who'd been feeding off the back of we Germans, who when a German company collapsed, they would buy up the property, cheap, literally living off the blood of others. We do not need these parasites in Germany. The Jews, they were the reason I did not join the Communist Party. They were the reason I looked to the Nazis. I remember the first time that I saw Adolf Hitler, the Fuhrer. Well, I'd read the Nazi posters, the slogans, work, bread, freedom, against Versailles, this kind of thing. But to see him in the flesh, his eyes lit as if they were on fire, his words growing louder and louder with the passion as he thumped home the message to us. It was as if he could read our minds, feel what was in our hearts. The Fuhrer, he was just what we needed. He told us how we would sweep away the 30 political parties. We'd already done soup kitchens to try and help the unemployed, but it was getting them back to work. 
And this is what we did. The building of the autobahns, motorways, housing, even reconstruction of the railways. Workers came from all over Germany. But what was most important was rearmament. It was all part of the Führer's four-year plan. Conscription. Soldiers need uniforms, equipment and weapons. These had to be manufactured in Germany. It helped the economy and it gave us back our self-respect, that that we had lost after the Great War. Very early on, the Führer realised the need to bring the youth into the National Socialist Movement. We organised the Hitler Youth Movement, where youngsters between the age of 14 and 18 could join, become physically fit, strong, be trained, and as they grew older could join the army, or if they were good enough, the SS. There was the German Maidens League for the young ladies, where they became fit. You must realise that these were the fathers and the mothers of the future Germans. No Jews allowed in this, only Germans, to keep our racial purity as it should be. We've achieved a lot under National Socialism, guided by the Führer. Our economy, it's the best it's been since the war. Ein Moment, bitte. Was? Was wollen Sie hier? Nein! Nein! Despite what the Allies have done to us, we have managed to rebuild our economy, also restore national pride in Germany. There is better health care, no unemployment. We also have a good sound foreign policy. Don't forget the Berlin Olympics, very, very successful. But we do take care of all of our people, especially the farmers with the Reich entail farming laws. We make them feel as if they belong to Germany. They are part of us. We call it the national community. It's very, very successful. As far as I'm concerned, there's no room for opposition, not even criticism. This is a one-party state now. The National Socialist Party have built us a future. Or would you rather go back to the end of the Great War? Hunger, poverty, even starvation. Look, this is long term. This is a thousand year Reich. You are either with us or you are against us. Our secret police, the Gestapo, they do a very good job in arresting those who stand against us. Jews, communists, trade unionists, socialists, even churchmen can find themselves under arrest in a concentration camp or simply as a guest of the Gestapo for re-education purposes. Mind you, I've never heard of anybody returning re-educated, have you? <laughs>